And Tim, you wrote brilliantly about the refugee situation in The Telegraph this week. This is an issue that is moving quicker than a lot of people uh, probably realise. The boats have started returning to Australia since Labor resumed office in Canberra, although none have got through yet. Tim, what are the odds that Labor will go soft on this and what can we learn from what's going on in the United States at the moment? The real challenge will come when a boat or two does actually make it through, if someone makes it to the mainland or to um, any Australian territory, and then we'll have to deal with it. And at that point, the uh, I guess you'd call it the refugee compassion industry is going to fire right back up and will be basically where we were throughout the Rudd-Gillard years. You know, they're, they're human beings. It's a legal right to seek asylum and so on. You'll hear all the same crap. What's always interesting about this is the, the people who are... Many of the people who are most compassionate towards refugees never have to deal with the refugee issue in in the, the three-dimensional world. It's, it re, if it remains theoretical, they're all in favour of it. They don't have to deal with, for example, uh, issues of uh, uh, violence or, or unemployment or uh, destruction of property, which we've seen a lot in Melbourne's West, where there's large immigrant populations uh, and refugee populations. So for them, in their comfy suburbs, you know, all people are great, all people are lovely. They're never going to face the impact of what they're talking about. Now, we have the same situation in the US where Washington, D.C., 3,000 kilometres from the, the border, of, of the Mexican border, where all the problems are, D.C. calls itself a sanctuary city and they say all these lovely things about how they'll welcome refugees and all this sort of stuff. But the odds of a whole bunch of refugees ever getting there, not great. So the governments of Texas and Arizona, which border Mexico, thought they'd uh, help out a little. <laughs> and uh, they put about 4,000, 4,500 uh, border crosses onto buses and sent them to Washington, D.C. Now, D.C. went berserk. There was no, you know, all this stuff about inclusivity and diversity, out the window, gone, history. Instead, oh, my God, all our homeless shelters are overwhelmed. This is a, this is a crisis. They're using the word crisis. And um, the mayor of D.C., who didn't call for the National Guard when Washington was burning during the, um, the year of mostly peaceful demonstrations <laughs> in 2020, she's calling for the National Guard. And we're only talking about 4,000 of these people. I think it's two and a half, three million in total have made the border crossing or attempted to in the last two years. And they're arriving in little, you know, Texan and Arizona border towns Apparently, they should be able to cope with it. You know, just, you know, just be nice to the your new arrivals. But well, well, speaking of... Washington, D.C. can't cope? Yeah. 